All right, guys, I wasn't um, planning on doing a video about the earth or pole shifts or anything like that today, but some news has come out that our earth's core uh, had stopped its rotation and reversed. And this is more evidence of this impending pole shift. So I'm going to show some different stuff to you. Let me see if I can get this out of the way. Get that out of my way. And I don't think you all can see me. I can't figure out how I pinned myself to the screen last time. Um, Earth's inner core may have stopped spinning and then reversed its direction and went the other way. This is the hottest headlines everywhere today. Okay. So then we go over here. Earth's core is reversing its spin. They say that it won't affect our daily lives. However, it actually will. Um, and I'm going to get to that. So just as the Earth spins, our inner core also has its own spin. And it's not always necessarily the same speed. Matter of fact, every seven years that changes. Um get my mouse to work this is a cyclical event okay i want everybody to remember that this is a cyclical event so we have earth's inner core reversing its spin and i want to just read this to you real quick They've been studying the Earth's core since 1936 um, through seismic waves and earthquakes and how they travel through the planet and the time that it takes them to travel. This is how we know anything at all about Earth's core. Uh, we've never been able to measure it directly. They don't exactly know what the, the core is. They assume that it is molten iron. They assume that it is. That's their best guess. They don't know for sure. Um, so yeah, they've been studying since 96. They've discovered that the travel time of the seismic waves have changed since the 60s, indicating that the Earth's inner core rotates faster than the rest of our planet. Later studies refine the estimates of this difference between the inner core and the mantle's spin rate, concluding that the inner core rotates one-tenth of a degree faster than the mantle each year. Uh, this is what they call the super rotation. There's also what is known as a sub rotation where it actually turns and spins slower than the Earth's mantle. Um, okay, so this has been actually changing since 1971 this uh, speed. Now, the wobble of the earth also needs to come into play here. And uh, we need to think about that for a moment, because all of this is different pieces of the puzzle that leads to the evidence and proof that an impending pole shift is upon us. And that this is due to a cyclical event that happens um, within our solar system with our other binary solar system that the ancients had warned us warned us about um, and they tagged it uh, wormwood and nibiru and nemesis and things like that uh, this other solar system has seven planets that the ancients knew of in its system along with moons asteroids satellites meteors comets etc just like any other solar system would. This also explains why we've had so many uh, near-Earth objects coming into our vicinity recently. Um, a good friend of mine has uh, been following that with the uh, near misses of Earth with the asteroids that are incoming. And um, I'm going to show you this other lady that I follow, Gina 
Marie Hilvin, uh, Colvin Hill, she's been following the webcams and stuff to watch what's going on in the sky. And we're going to put all of this together so that you can see the full picture. Okay. So in 2005, uh, most of you are probably familiar with the tsunami that happened in um, Indonesia. It was a very devastating tsunami. It happened on Christmas. And so there are people that study the wobble of the earth all over our planet. We have great scientists that are studying the wobble of the planet. I didn't even notice that stuff about Jesus at the bottom of this page. <laughs> okay. So Earth's wobble actually came to a complete halt in 2005, uh, right before, literally right before the Indonesia uh, tsunami happened, earthquake and tsunami. And uh, this man did a lot of work on that did a paper on it, uh, several papers actually, for 2004 to 2006. His uh, name is Michael Mandeville. And I will post all these links if you want to do the research yourself. So what he found is that after the wobble of the earth came to a complete halt and then began to wobble again, it actually started wobbling in a counterclockwise position. Um, and that was as of um, November, between the end of November and the beginning portions of December of 2005. Now we know that the, the Earth's wobble is also on a seven year uh, cycle, much like the inner core of the earth is on a seven year cycle. Sevens are God's number. They're a magic number, right? For lots of things. Um, let me find where that was at. I had it highlighted and now the highlight is gone. Okay, here it is. Right there. So it says, Note that the red line portion is for 2005 through the current date. The junction with the blue line portion is about the date of the Sumatra tsunami. As you can see, we cannot detect any disturbance in the wobble track related directly to the 9.6 megaquake on December 25th of 2005. But it's an awfully strange coincidence. It's a very, very strange coincidence. And this is where it began excuse me it goes this way actually counterclockwise it came to a complete abrupt stop and look at this um sharp like indentation in the wobble and then it came back out here and it completely stopped now i was one of the researchers that was tracking this um at this time when this happened because a lot of other things were going on um, solar observatories were being shut down all over the world uh, that a lot of us were watching and keeping a close eye on because we all firmly believed that we were going to see evidence of uh, this binary star system. The, the difference between me and a lot of the other people is that they weren't looking for an entire solar system to be coming at us. They were looking for like the ninth planet or the, or the 12th planet or 10th planet or whatever it is that they call it. They were looking for just a planet, right? Now, this is a webcam from Mount Etna that's on Web Taxi. And I went to Web Taxi today to see um, if I could see anything new on there. And of course, there's so much heavy, heavy cloud cover. You can't see a damn thing on there today. But this was actually yesterday's uh, webcam footage and Gina Marie Colvin Hill um, is a really great researcher in this. She watches the skies all over the world. And I just want to play this through for a minute and let you see, because if you look closely, you can see this blue um, orb 
glowing through the clouds and she's showing everyone that if this was light reflection from the from the uh, camera and the sun was causing it that it wouldn't still be there as the clouds go past as the clouds go over it would totally cover it up but this is something that is coming through the clouds and so you can clearly see that this is something that is out there in between us and those clouds in our sky okay so i'm going to play this through for a few minutes and let you see the this is from the sun up above this right here green area it's reflection ask yourself why is that going behind there really why is that reflection you all let's think about this why did it go behind the clouds on that flare you can see it back there look at it it's back there why this is now this is really this is strange you all let's talk my goodness goodness gracious you all this is extremely like sensitive let's see if we can back it up some okay we backed it up some let's look at some of this right here hello you thought it was a planet it could be a planet um something's in the sky and if it's if, if it's behind the clouds then you know so look look like a face is up there in between these clouds it's it's not normal okay okay look at this so um we're looking at it let's bring it down let's bring it down you all we can do it we're gonna bring it down okay watch it did we already get past that part it's okay let's see it it's still back there i wanted to be able to get it better i just i guess i'd Oh my gosh, I, I guess I didn't go far enough back to get it, but I will get it. I will get it, you all. Okay, let's she let's get let's it. get this green right here. So we got um <coughs> excuse me, the green and the blue. The green and the blue right here in the sky. So we're gonna examine this. We're gonna watch it just for um a moment because there are those who say that they see a little the blue planet and they see a green planet. So let's watch this. And some might say, well, that's. And I just want you to know that I personally have photographs of this green planet and you can see it even at night, whether the moon is out or not. It still shows up in the sky. It still shows up in my photographs. There is definitely something out there. It's just a reflecting reflection. It's a reflection of what's up there in the sky. If it wasn't in the sky, it wouldn't be showing up on a camera. The camera is picking something up. You also let's watch it. Um, let's look at these because we know they're not normal either. And um, you think that they're attached to these? See, look, look how fast this thing is moving right there. Of course, I do got this sped up. I do to two times. Excuse me, two times the speed. But we're going to watch what happens to this when these clouds get near it. Let's, let's look at it. And I know that this is... Um, Getting yeah, so I'm just close to this. this. Nope, the clouds are went over top it. You see, the clouds are in between it and us. They have went over top of it. You all, there, there truly is something in the sky. Something is up there. Look at that blue. You're going to get covered up too. Boom! You got covered up. Okay. So oh, it's freezing up here. We can see some of the uh, large greenish color right there. Look at that, you all. So ask yourself, how come the cloud is in front of that if it's just a, a mere <coughs> reflection? Okay, we got some more coming through. And they really don't. They don't look normal. Look at them now. now. I'm just going to move this up ahead a little bit. The headline and because the actually more planets show up because these right here more planets actually show up in this Let me get that out of my way so we'll let it load right there and while that's loading i just want to go over here and show you this other video that she's done I think it was today maybe it was last night anyway i want you to look this is very interesting too and this is over tennessee this is a tennessee um live camera 
watch this. I have photographs of the portals opening up too. Time and it was obvious that it wasn't any like raindrop or anything <laughs> like that because the wind was blowing and this right here stayed and stayed and stayed at the Tennessee Live webcam. And, and watch, um, she's going to show you that it's not the rain. There's something going on, you all. There really is something going on in the skies around the world. And uh, it, it's, um, some people may have seen like black portals before. They may have, but the white ones like this, it's not like a white spiral portal. It's not, but it's like something different. Look at this. Look at this, you all. Let's come over here and look at this portal in the Tennessee sky right here. If we are to um, watch how it manifested, it um, it's it's like a big old look circle. At that. It starts. Look at that. That is clearly a portal opening up. Times are changing, people. And speaking of time, it's off we're going to go back. The... I didn't mean to hit that. We're going to go back and revisit the the Earth's core um, stopping and reversing because that actually affects our time. Uh, they can say in that article that it doesn't affect our daily life all they want, but I've noticed for the past two, three weeks that time is actually missing from our day, like literally missing from our day every single day. And I know this for a fact because I have a little lantern that's on my shelf in the living room that is on a timer. It comes on at a certain time of night and it stays on for four hours and then shuts off. And it's been coming on. It started out coming on at 1030 at night. After the time change, it would come on at 930. And, you know, when we set our clocks back for fall. Um, and now all of a sudden in the past two, three weeks, it's been in increments changing to where now last night it actually came on before 9 p.m so we've lost a good 30 minutes there and that may not seem like a big deal to anyone but it actually is it's pretty huge because time is changing okay now let's watch this portal and then we're going to go back to that sky you can see it right there and um there was a lot of plasma, a lot of plasma, a lot, a lot of um, spiking. Look, at, Look at the red up there too. A lot of spiking of the plasma that was occurring. You got redness in the sky, um, lots of fog and stuff like that. And some people could say, okay, well, the plasma in the sky, the redness in the sky, that's from the solar flares that are happening. But and yes, it is from the solar flares that are happening. But Earth's magnetic shields are going down. And if the core stopped moving and is in a reverse position now, beginning a reverse rotation, this is a very telltale sign that our poles are beginning to reverse. That This is getting ready to happen. And I said months ago that if my calculations on this are correct with how fast magnetic north is moving currently, that by the end of March, beginning of April, we are going to experience a pulse shift, guys. Now, all of you can sit around. You've got three options, really. You can sit around and you can watch this play out and be fearful. Or, you know, study it, whatever that means for you to watch it play out. You could be the people that just don't care about it and ignore it and just go about your daily life. Or you could be the people like me and other light workers who have learned our true power and how to harness it so that we can do something about this. Now, I already know that the majority are not going to choose option C, but I am really trying to hit this home with you, how important it is for all of you to learn who you really are and what power we really have, because we can make a difference on this. We can affect this, guys. My whole screen just locked up. My energy got so big. Okay. I have to end my sharing for a minute because I got so excited. Everything just jammed up. But we can. We actually can. 
make a, a very effective change. We have the power within us to harness our earth, its core's movement, the shields that are around it. I part storms. I stop tornadoes. I'm not the only one that does it. There are many people in this world that know how to do this, but there's not enough. I'm trying to teach this to you. I'm trying to educate you, not just about the cyclical things that are happening to our planet, but your role in it. The ancients tried to tell you about it. Jesus tried to tell you. Now there's people like me who are trying to tell you again. Do you take heed of the warnings and the necessary lessons that you should take? Or do you choose option A or B? It's up to you. It's free will. But it affects all of us. Food for thought. Okay, so let me see if I can get out of this now. Because I don't, for some reason, I can't even... Why can I not even get to there it goes. Let's hit my escape button. All right, I want to stop this. You saw the portal. I want to go back to this and revisit this for just a moment. If it'll load. You see, we do affect plasma screens. We affect the electronics because we are magnetic creatures i did not do that you she said i did not do that but i did do this i did mess all this up and jam it up with my energy because that's how powerful we are and i think it's a blessing that this happened so that you could witness it because we do affect everything we can affect them the mouse cursor on our screen we can affect whether or not our DVD players work right. We can affect whether or not the satellite um, comes in well on the TV. We can affect the electricity in our house and everyone else's around us. Once I was healing someone and I was trying so hard to block their energy, uh, their negativity of not believing they could be healed, that I actually knocked out the power to everyone around us. 827 people or something like that. 800 and something people. Their electricity in their homes got knocked out. That's how powerful we are. I, of course, I didn't mean to do it. And I've learned since then, you know, how to uh, keep that from happening. And, and that was part of my lessons so that I could teach it to you properly. So that you too can know how to do this. And we don't really fuck some shit up. Because it is powerful. And with great power does come great responsibility. And I've learned that through trial and error. I know how to teach it to you. And this other system, this other planetary solar system that's out there, you're looking at it. It is coming. It's not doom. It doesn't have to be doom. It doesn't have to be us praying and hoping for the best. We can actually physically do something about it. And when I say physically, I don't even mean like, you have to do hard work, like get out and shovel dirt or something, kind of hard manual labor. It's in your mind. It's mental work. It's mental focus. And I can teach you exactly how to do that. If you'll learn, if any of you would be willing to learn. But unfortunately, not many are. And I'm sorry, I, I have to say this. If enough people don't get on board with who we are, then we're no different than the rest of the people in ancient times where two thirds of the population of the earth get wiped out. So that blood would be on your hands. And I'm not trying to guilt trip you. That's just a fact. That's just a damn fact. That if you know, if you're hearing someone tell you that there is another option and you're not choosing to do something to help, 
It's no different than you standing and being an innocent, quote unquote, innocent bystander to a rape or a murder or whatever. You're an accomplice because you knew that there was something you could have done. You just didn't take any action to do it. Now, for me personally and my family, we'll be safe because I know what to do. But what about everybody else's families? What about your own families? You can actively, effectively do something to help change this. Let me just show you. Let me just speed this up. Here they are showing up. Look, one, two, three, four showing up now. And a total of six are going to show up here. And this is not, not light reflection or re refraction, however you say that. And I actually have photographs from standing in my own yard. And I'm only a few miles away from Gina Marie Colvin Hill. And I can stand in my own yard and take these same pictures that she is seeing on these webcams that's in Italy out at Mount Etna. The whole world is seeing this now, guys. The whole world. This is a big deal. This is historical. This is biblical. This is monumental sh stuff we're going through. I'm trying not to cuss. I typically cuss like a sailor. And I'm trying to be good for the video. But I'm very passionate about this. Because everybody's life matters. To me. Everybody. Okay, so Earth Swabble came to a complete halt in 2005 and then began again. If you look at our other planets in our solar system that are known to us, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, the likes, all of them, their wobble came to a halt and then restarted. Some of them went in reverse. And they've already had their global warming and their pole shift. This is not just our planet that it's happening to. It's the whole freaking system. I hope you understand that. I hope you really get that. It's the whole system. We have another solar system inside of our own that is inbound, that will affect our planet, that the ancients did warn us about. Many ancients, Sumerians, Mayans, Aztecs, the Navajo knew, the Hopi knew, Many indigenous tribes have tried to leave this knowledge, this wisdom for us so that we would know when it comes back around again. Thoth wrote in the Emerald Tablets that there would come a time when the reptilians would try to come back to our planet to take it over. It took me a long time to figure that one out. I was like, well, if they've been here before, why couldn't they come back anytime they want? Why do they have to wait till a certain time? Because they're on those planets that are in our solar system that are orbiting around that binary star. As it comes closer, they can visit more frequently. As it gets extremely close, then they can try to do whatever. I don't know what their mission is. All I know is that we can protect ourselves from all of this. All of it. And I know 
I may have went too far with bringing up the reptilians. I may have just lost a whole lot of people who were listening until that point. But there's a lot about our world that we weren't told. And great masters like Thoth and Jesus tried to tell us. I hope that you take heed to this. I hope that this matters enough to you that you want to learn who you are and how to harness your power. Because that is my mission. That is why I'm here. That's the whole reason I've been here all along. I've remembered that from the time I was born and old enough to articulate it to my family. It's a damn shame when somebody can know something so well and even find the evidence to back it up. And they only want to share this knowledge to help save people. But people choose not to believe it or listen to it. I've said before, I think I kind of know how Noah might have felt as he built the ark. He was probably very ridiculed and many people did not listen to him. How did that turn out? And that event of Noah's flood, it was caused from the same cyclical stuff that we're getting ready to go through. So do we go through it prepared? Or do we stand around with our thumb up our butt and our pants down? I mean, you know what I mean by that. Getting caught off guard. Or just not really taking it that seriously. I wouldn't be putting myself out there and talking about this if I didn't know for a fact that there was scientific evidence to back up what I've always felt and believed within me. Because I even questioned that myself, as anyone should. You should question your beliefs. You should seek the answers. You should seek the truths to determine whether or not those beliefs are accurate. And that's exactly what I've done. And I'm trying to present that evidence to you. And many others are trying to pre present this evidence to you so that you can be prepared. So much more so than FEMO could imagine we could be prepared for. There's a lot of people on this planet that don't want us to wake up to our true power. They just assume, see it, a two-thirds of us annihilated. I would just assume see the good win and win big. So if you're with me and you want to learn, the information and the links for that will be below in the description box. And I'll see you again soon.